Look at that, looks fake. But he's pointing up to Allah. Straight away, Conor McGregor had to put his arm above Joe Rogan to show like, some sort of dominance. They don't like this, I'm saying this, mashallah. This is the key pillar of Islamic confidence. Assalamu alaikum. Now, a while ago, there was that famous fight between Khabib and Conor McGregor, and it almost felt like the Battle of Uhud, where we had the Mushrikeen against the Muslimin, and we were excited to see how Khabib would destroy McGregor especially because Khabib holds himself as a strong Muslim man, openly Muslim man. What I'm going to do in this video is analyze the way in for that fight to see is Khabib really holding himself the way a Muslim man should? Because it's one thing for us to judge someone as being masculine, being manly, being strong, being courageous, being Islamic, being a good Muslim. But it's another thing when we actually compare that to what's in the Quran and Sunnah. So you never know what we'll find out. In short, does being a practicing Muslim actually affect your behavior and how masculine you are in an Islamic way. So let's watch this way in and at the end we'll come to a conclusion whether Habib is actually acting in a masculine Islamic way or not according to his body language and his conduct. Let's go. Okay Bismillah let's go for this. Obviously, it's all flashing lights, everything fancy. Let's see what the behavior is. Because Kharbib, you know, although he's Muslim, he seems to, you know, he acts, he seems to take the religion quite seriously. He is in a bad atmosphere. Not gonna, you know, there's no hiding from that. Um, I think there's alcohol involved, there's women not dressed well. It's all this show and tell and this and that. But let's see what he's gonna act like. Okay, straight away, because I'm going to look at both of them, right, and kind of c compare and contrast. Straight away, look how Conor McGregor is walking. He's walking with that kind of walk of arrogance and pride, like, yeah, let me hold myself up there. You could say he's doing that for the show of intimidating Khabib, um, playing into the kind of acting role, the entertainment side of it. But when we contrast with Khabib, you'll see how it's different. He's almost artificially got his shoulders up to make his shoulders seem bigger. Look, that looks fake. You know how he's got his uh, shoulders up like that. You see, he's fully embracing this whole thing of, yeah, it's me. I'm the, ba I'm the best. I've got the crowd on my side. I'm, I'm playing into that, right? Yeah, so again, playing fully into it, throwing his cap into the crowd and almost a bit too eager to take his clothes off, to be honest. You see what he just did there? He took his shirt off and he looked up in the cameras to see what he looks like. <laughs> okay, so keep that in mind. Obviously, he's full of tattoos, not very Islamic. His aura is fully showing, you know, he's, he's, he's too quick to take his clothes off and stand in front of all the TV cameras and the crowd with very little clothes on. His aura is showing. Um, I wonder how Khabib is going to act when it comes to this weigh-in. Okay, look at this pose. Very iconic pro pose. He's got his tattoos. He's got his own name on his chest. He's got his own name there. Very interesting. I mean, it's his family name, so maybe it's not like <laughs> too uh, narcissistic or whatever. But you can see he's playing into the whole thing, trying to intimidate, trying to show, yeah, I'm the one, I'm the best kind of thing. Um, and he's doing it to the crowd. I think it would be one thing if he's doing it to him with himself in the mirror, but doing it to the crowd, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of got that arrogant feel to it. And then again, he's, he's doing the scream. He's got, you know, Drake with him, these famous people. Look at the arrogant walk. <laughs> There's no doubt about this uh, arrogant walk. Look at him. He, and he's playing into the whole entertainment side of things. When he lost, it made, of course, the fall even further. Now look at Khabib, look how he enters. What's the first thing he does? He points up to the sky. And I'm gonna assume that's pointing to Allah, 
reminding everyone Allah. It's because of Allah. Notice as well how he's dressed. He's got the uh, traditional Dagestani hat, I believe, on and kind of plain clothes. Twenty six nil. Whoa! I didn't know. I, I don't know too much about UFC, but wow. Look, very uh, casual walk. Very casual walk. Walking up um, with the guy behind him. You know, there's no Drake. There's no kind of superstar celebrities with him. Um, I don't know who. The, I guess the guy behind him is his uh, trainer or his. Uh... He doesn't really engage with uh, McGregor. McGregor's trying to uh, intimidate him, trying to look at him, trying to put him off a little bit, and he's just like he's chill. You know, taking it easy. That is that subtle confidence, that actual substanceful, can I say, Islamic confidence. Go straight to the weigh-in. I mean, I'm sure the official weigh-in, maybe this isn't even the official weigh-in where they actually weigh properly. Maybe this is just a show. I'm not sure. But he didn't take his clothes off, you know. He's um, standing there with his aura fully covered. So McGregor didn't even need to do that. But he chose to do that. Look at that. That's beautiful. That's beautiful, man. So straight away he gets on and the commentator is still cheering him on, uh, praising him, all of that. And in a very simple way, he points at himself, no, nah, it's not me. None of it is me. It's Allah, right? This is the keystone. This is the key pillar of Islamic confidence, masculinity, showing, yes, alhamdulillah, I can do this. 26-0. This guy is going down, McGregor's going down, but it's not because of me, it's because of Allah. I put it all back to Allah. So how McGregor was uh, beating his chest and holding his arms up and uh, walking with that arrogant way, he's pointing to himself and he's pointing to the crowd. What does Khabib do? He doesn't point to himself, doesn't point to the crowd, points to Allah, so it's all due to Allah. Because I said this before, I'll say this again. Khabib, there are people tra who trained more than him who had better trainers than him, who put in more time than him, who were maybe stronger than him, fitter than him, but he had the success. Why is that? It's because Allah chose that. And, he, and we all have to acknowledge this. Any successes we have, it's from Allah. It's not because we have done anything particularly good. It's because, because there are always people who worked harder than you or who are smarter than you or who are stronger than you. But Allah gives to who he wills. He doesn't linger very long there, doesn't do any chest bump, just simple guy, I like it. Now he is kind of playing into it a little bit, I don't know if how much of this they have to do and how much of it, um, it it's up to them, but he is kind of playing into it, he is, um, you know, meeting face to face with McGregor. And you see McGregor's all shouting and he's being a bit more aggressive, a bit more mouthy, you could say, which fits into that whole arrogant uh, demeanor. And Habib's kind of just quiet. Again, that calm confidence. <laughs> the guy's saying, don't touch. Is that Dana White? I don't know. Uh, he's saying, don't touch. And of course, McGregor touches, right? So breaking the rules, if you like. Um, again, that comes with the whole arrogant package. Khabib is kind of playing into it, just saying, you know, I'm ready for you, you know, you can come. He's not being mouthy per se, but he's, he's like, yeah, I'm ready, it's cool. I, I love this, this calm, confident demeanor. <laughs> McGregor, his arms are high up. He's, uh, again, signaling, yeah, I'm the best, I'm the, the, playing into this whole show. And what I prefer is the one who is the Trojan horse, the quiet one, the one where you don't expect it from them, the one who doesn't need to talk, they just act. <laughs> There. So look, look, this is beautiful comparison. Back there in the back of the shot, you can see Habib, uh, you can see McGregor putting his fists up, right? Which again is uh, pointing to himself, if you like that. Look, I'm here. I'm ready for this. Yeah. But Habib, uh, his arms are also up, but he's pointing up to Allah. Don't let that smelly rap put that hat on your head, Joe. 
Again, the insulting, the low-level language. If we look back a little bit, actually, Joe Rogan comes over, puts his arm around his back. Straight away, Conor McGregor had to put his arm above Joe Rogan to show like, some sort of dominance. Don't let that smelly rat put that hat, hat on your head, Joe. And he calls him a smelly rat. Like, come on, like, people of substance, people of principles, they respect their opponent. If the opponent is worth fighting, then he's worth respecting, surely. If you don't respect someone, like, why are you fighting them, you know? You need to at least give them that respect that, okay, this person is worthy of fighting. And he was asked a question, he didn't even answer it. He, he just threw this stupid insult. The smell of that thing. Don't ever let him, let him put that hat on your head. It's good to be back. USC fans, it's good to be back. The king is home. Thank you. No, the king is home. Of course, he has to use bad language because he has no substance to back up his character, his personality. That's a common trend with swearing. Like my friend, Andrew Tate. First of all, I want to say, Alhamdulillah, God give me everything. Look at that. Look, if there's anything that is masculine confidence, it is to be certain of your abilities and your strengths and to relay that back to Allah. And that's all Habib is doing. Again, he doesn't answer Joe Rogan's question directly and straight away. He first gives praise to Allah. And to do that in such an open manner, in front of these half-naked women, in front of the, all the TV cameras and all the crowd screaming and, you know, Drake and Joe Rogan and this, like, kind of on McGregor's side. He's just a simple guy, quiet, but with substance. And he backed it up when he won. And he's saying, Alhamdulillah, all praises to Allah. Everything came from Allah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. He's spelling it out for them. No, you got this. They don't like this. They don't like this. I'm saying this, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, tomorrow night I'm gonna smash your boy, guys. <laughs> tomorrow I'm gonna smash your boy. I'm gonna smash your boy. And, and you see, normally, uh, you know, you might, you might say, oh, but you're saying that's arrogant and this and that. Yes, it might have a flavor of that, but I'll tell you something. When you have that demeanor, but you relay all the success back to Allah, it changes everything. That's the first thing. The second thing is, in Islam, we have the ayah. Surah Al-Fatih. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Muhammadun Rasulullahi Walladheena Ma'ahu Ashidda'u Ala Al-Kuffari Ruhama'u Baynahum. Okay, so they, the believers, Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah and the believers that are with him, they are uh, merciful between themselves, but they are harsh on the disbelievers. And and by the way, this isn't just, uh, he's not being harsh on a random disbeliever. He's being, he's being harsh on someone who's shown arrogance. They've shown a negative attitude, like so enmity towards Islam. And so this is the place to do that. Thank you, all Irish fans, you know, all fans around the world. Because of you guys, this fight is happened. Thank you guys. And tomorrow night, inshallah, and still. Inshallah, again. So can you imagine this? Like, we have to really think about this. Like, I live in a Muslim country. Everywhere I'm throwing is Inshallah, Inshallah, Alhamdulillah, this and that. But he is in the belly of the beast. I don't know where this is. Was this in Las Vegas? Or I don't know where this was, yeah? But the atmosphere is absolutely not Islamic. 99% of people there are not Muslim. And he's coming with the Alhamdulillah and the Inshallah. And something that I want to throw in there is that when you show pride in your religion and you're very open about your religion from day one of meeting someone it just becomes the norm it becomes what they expect from you just how i don't know you're let's say you're someone who eats loads when they meet you they might find it weird at the beginning that you're well you're eating so much but after that point they expect it from you it's very normal so the same goes for this you show your islam you show it openly from day one and it's not weird anymore and they respect you for who you are Notice as well, Khabib was kind of insulted with that low blow by McGregor, but he didn't respond to that. It's just water off a dog's back, you know, it doesn't bother him. It's a low blow, ignore it. So there you have it, the Conor McGregor versus Khabib weigh in. What are some of the lessons we can take from this? Well, from Khabib's side of things, we can definitely say to be able 
is a good thing in Islam. Being able, meaning being able to turn up there with a 26 to zero record, that is a big thing in and of itself. Because when you've got that ability behind you, you've got that strength backing you up, you've got that substance, now you can come and act a certain way and people will respect you for it. It's a form of da'wah and people will, will look up to whoever you relay your success back to. So now because he's 26 to nil, if he says Alhamdulillah it's from Allah, now people take that more seriously. So first is to be able. Don't be a weak man. Be a strong man, an able man, not just physically, but emotionally, mentally. Be good at whatever your craft is. The second thing is that when you become good at something, even if you're not good at something really, you should always relay anything good back to Allah and understand that you only have that thing because Allah gave it to you. The third thing is that when you are confident, you trust in Allah, you relay your success back to Allah, then you can have this demeanor and this confidence that you don't need to worry about these petty people People who try to insult you, try to throw things at you, they try to play dirty with you, they try to provoke you, you can just be calm and relax and understand that whether in the dunya or in the akhirah, things are going to be sorted out. And you can imagine if he fell into the provocation of McGregor, McGregor's trying to call him a dirty rat, trying to kick at him and this and that. Imagine he fell into that and he went and he gave him a jab or he insulted him back. That wouldn't be as sweet as if he just ignored it, but then on the day of the fight when the substance really matters, he came and beat him. So ability, humility, relating stuff back to Allah, having that calm and collected demeanor, these I would give them the stamp of Islamic masculinity, absolutely. As for McGregor, he showed the traits of a kafir, let's be real. The arrogance, the lack of substance, having to just give it all of that, try and back himself up by having celebrities with him, talking dirty. In the end, when the substance came, it didn't matter. And likewise, the kafir, if they die that way, then Yom al Qiyamah, whatever they had in the dunya of riches, of success, it won't mean anything. And that is the day where reality really comes in. In the dunya, it's not always going to work out where the Khabibs beat the McGregors. But in the akhirah, the reality comes into play. So this was my body language analysis of Khabib versus McGregor. If you're interested in some of the traits that we pulled out and we analyzed from this clip, then make sure you check out my book because it goes through all the traits that a good Muslim man should have. And if you're interested in more videos for Muslim men like yourself, then subscribe to this channel because there's a lot more coming, inshallah. Oh, and of course, to take the lesson from Khabib, if anything, this video was good, then Alhamdulillah. It's all from Allah. Assalamu alaikum. Standing on a corner, trying to make ends meet. On the edge of the fire, love is so